Hi everybody. We're going to start this video off by rummaging through my little stack of scrap wood and seeing what I can use for an idea that I've had. So I wanted to create a substrate to, um, to be something different when I do a pour on it. So I thought about doing this feather and so to start off I just grabbed a pencil and drew the center line, the approximate outside line and then I went through giving it this finer detail to create these little separations that sometimes occur in feathers. So that's what we're up to here. And just because I've got several lines on the wood now, I'm just going over the ones that I'd really like to follow um, and making them a little darker. So that's how it's looking all in there so I'm going to take that over to the scroll saw now and remove some of this excess from the end all right so I just did that so it's easier to move around so now we will go around the outside edge ever so carefully trying to follow that pencil line that I've drawn. Now to get these nice sharp separations I'm going to come in from one angle and then back out and then come in from a different angle and back out again. So that allows me to get that very specific nice sharp point because I'm still quite new to scrolling, so that's the best way I figured to do that. Alright, so mostly finish this first side. Here's how it looks. So that's where I'm up to at the top. So now I'll carry on with the rest. And ta-da! <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I'm sorry I haven't sorted out an actual specific way to film everything I'm doing so that's why it's a whole bunch of snippets put together so there we go all cut out it's got some rough edges this is a very soft kind of wood um, and around the edges some areas look kind of fuzzy furry furry perhaps is the right word to use so I'm just trying to capture the right light here to show you and then I'll do some sanding so I'll hit it with a, a 100 grit sandpaper and then a 340 grit wet and dry sandpaper and it's only because those um, grit, I didn't choose those grits, they were all I had. So um, that's what I used. So just going around, smoothing it out. And this is how it looks after it's been all sanded and ready to go so I'll start off just by sealing around that outside edge so that is my spring brand white house paint there's already one layer and you can see that it brings up some of those fibers so I'll give it another sand 
and then coat around the outside again and then over the top ready to pour so as you see here I've got my eight ply wool so that is what I use for my string dip technique and that was the whole idea of doing the feather in the wood so that I could do the string dip feather on top of it and see how it goes when you combine the shape and the technique together so that's that's where the plan was headed so I've chosen a gold a crimson and a yellow for this I um, was hoping for a little bit of blending in between the red and the yellow oh sorry crimson and the yellow and the crimson and the gold to create kind of an orange I wanted something a little bit vibrant so a bit of happy bright feeling so I do have that mark in the wood there so I don't know how that will affect it once uh, I've done the pour and uh, it dries out but we shall see so this is a combination of my spring brand house paint and creative place titanium white and it's a combination because I'm I'm running low on supplies uh, so I to make up some more paint I had to just kind of combine a couple of things so so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm pushing the paint down in between those separations and around the edges as well. It does already have the coat of white paint so I'm not completely stressed if it doesn't uh, cover everything around the edges. So just torched out some bubbles there and there'll be time to get the string ready. So just trying to put the paint down in sections as I would for I think all of my previous string dip feathers I do this way just to get that variation through as you pull the string out and up so all the paints and the mediums that I use I'll have listed in the description box below right so I just made sure that all the all the string all the wool was covered with the paint and let's see if the idea <laughs> works in reality so just laying it down the center line which would be like the vein of the feather down to the quill or is it all called the quill something to think about all right so I'm gonna head out towards the right side and trying to watch carefully that I'm following the line of the feather that I cut out and I didn't actually notice um that the white was very thick so it was doing that that rollover over the wool as you pull it um which normally i prefer if it doesn't do that but perhaps because i'm not used to this white combination 
my white was on a, a little bit on the thick side so next time I do this I'll just make sure that um, probably either uh, making the white a little runnier or leaving it as it is and just having less on whichever substrate I'm using especially for this technique to avoid that rollover but I still think it looks amazing <laughs> I'm really happy with that and because that did happen on the right hand side um, I tried to make sure that I still got that rollover on this left side as well so just placing the string back down that center line so you notice my colors are a little bit off to each other which I love so any excess string down at that base section I've just fold up and put in my hand and then I realized I need to swap hands all right so trying to still allow that rollover to happen so that both sides match whoa yes <laughs> I was so thrilled oh I'm so happy The colours turned out amazing. The effect was at like similar effects on both sides. And the centre line looks stunning without dragging the string back through. So I'm just like so excited, super excited to get back out into the wood pile and create some more. <laughs> So, if you're enjoying this as much as I am, <laughs> um, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. What kind of colours or shapes would you like to see created? And if you know someone that would enjoy this or be inspired, please share it with them. That's what this is all about, sharing sharing the process so there's a bit of a close-up as we follow that feather down so stoked Woohoo! <laughs> the one thing that i have taken away from this is perhaps next time i do the feather i will put the separations on just a little bit more of an angle so that they're because I can use how the paint turned out as an example when I plan the next one so thank you so much everybody be kind be creative and be fabulous bye